This LOS is describe the different amortization methods for intangible assets with finite lives and calculate amortization expense. Depreciation and amortization of long-lived assets. So now we're carrying on with the amortization methods and calculation of amortization expense. Amortization is a similar in concept to depreciation. The term amortization applies to intangible assets and the term depreciation applies to tangible assets. Both terms refer to the process of allocating the cost of an asset over the asset's useful life. Intangible assets with finite useful lives include acquired customer list expected to provide benefits to a direct mail marketing company for two to three years, an acquired patent or copyright with a specific expiration date, an acquired license with a specific expiration date and no right to renew the license, an acquired trademark for a product that a company plans to phase out over a specific number of years. Recall that if there's an infinite life, then the asset, the intangible asset is not uh, amortized, okay? So examples of intangible assets with indefinite useful lives include an acquired license that, although it has specific expiration date, can be renewed at little or no cost, and an acquired trademark that, although it has a exp uh, specific expiration date, can be renewed at minimal cost and relates to a product that a company plans to continue selling for the foreseeable future. So a few little fine details there that a multiple choice question could easily uh, be based on. As with depreciation for a tangible asset, the calculation of amortization for an intangible asset requires the original amount at which the intangible asset is recognized and estimates of the length of its useful life and its residual value at the end of its useful life. Useful lives are estimated on the basis of the expected use of the asset, considering any factors that may limit the life of the asset, such as legal, regulatory, contractual, competitive, or economic factors. So of course, we're gonna use the uh, straight line or the accelerated method, not units of production, because this is an intangible asset, it's not a piece of equipment. So we're gonna finish this LOS with a practice question. During 2010, the following events occurred at a company. The company one purchased a customer list for $100,000, which is expected to provide equal annual benefits for the next four years. Two recorded 200,000 of goodwill in the acquisition of a competitor. It is estimated that the acquisition would provide substantial benefits for the company for at least the next 10 years and three spent 300,000 on media placements announcing the company had donated products and services to the community. The CEO believes the firm's reputation was enhanced substantially and the company will likely benefit from it for the next five years. So based on those three events, the amortization expense that the company should report in 2011 is closest to A, 25,000, B, 45,000, or C, 85,000. So the correct answer is A, the customer list is the only identifiable intangible asset and it should be amortized on a straight line basis over its expected future life. So that's $100,000 divided by four equals $25,000 per year. So A is correct. Goodwill is an unidentifiable intangible and should be tested for impairment but not amortized. Goodwill is not amortized. Okay, it's tested for impairment each year. And all advertising and promotion costs, such as the media placement, are typically expensed. If the reputation of the company has been enhanced, as the CEO suggests, this is an internally generated intangible that is not recorded on the balance sheet and is therefore not amortized. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.